That was the croaking sound of different frog species. You must have heard them before, right? But did you know it is only the male frog that croaks and not the female ones? Interesting, right? But why? Why do only males croak? In this short video, we will try to understand the whys and hows of different interesting characteristics of this hopping jumping friend of ours, the frog. Okay? So first thing first, why do only males croak? What comes to your mind when I just told you this? What what do you think? Well, in the animal kingdom, in any species, if you see a particular characteristic is exclusively uh, found in one particular gender, then most of the time that particular character is to attract the opposite gender. And the same is true for the frogs here. They croak to attract the female frogs. So this croaking is nothing but a mating call. Or you can call it as an advertisement call because it's the male frog advertising themselves as potential partners hoping that the female frog will like their song and come their way. Now this croaking which is a soothing love song for the female frog can be a little irritating to our ears, right? Because it is so loud that it can be heard from miles away and it can go on for hours. So, like, how are these tiny creatures able to produce such loud sound and for so long? Because think about it, you and me can never think of doing that. You know, if, we, if we think of screaming loudly, we can't do it for a very long time, right? So, how are these tiny creatures able to produce so, such loud sound and that too for so long? Well, you and me, we have vocal cords, okay? We have something called vocal cords in our larynx, okay? And uh, the air rushes through these vocal cords and we are able to produce any sound, okay? But when it comes to frogs, nature has blessed them with an additional thing, which is called the vocal sac. Vocal sac and it looks somewhat like this. So these frogs, they fill their vocal sacs with air, which is attached to their mouth, okay? And the air inside acts like a resonance to amplify their sound. And that is how it becomes so loud. Amazing, right? And since only males croak, these vocal sacs are only present in the male frogs. So this is the story behind the croaking of frog, which is nothing but a mating call and they do it with their vocal cord and vocal sacs. Okay. Now think of when you have last heard this mating calls of frog. Let me take a guess. It must be uh, a time after sunset when it is dark outside, right? And you must have been present near some water body like a pond okay so let me write you must have been near some water source and it was monsoon or springtime now how do i know it well this is the ideal time and situation of the year uh, for the frogs to mate and you probably must have heard them uh, during those time of the year right well now let's analyze these situations darkness water source and this monsoon and spring season why do you think they croak during the night well the first answer would be that the frogs are nocturnal animals and they are anyway uh, very active only during the night time it's not necessarily only during the mating season okay they are anyways very active during the dark and also if they croak during the daytime they will attract the unnecessary attention of their predators right that is why night is the perfect time for croaking. And talking of predators, do you know that frogs can escape the sight of predators by camouflaging with its surroundings? Look at this frog and look at the color of the leaf it is sitting on. They are exactly the same, right? This is to fool their predators or enemies. And this ability to mimic the color of its surroundings to escape from predators is called mimicry. Now let's move on to why these frogs need to be essentially near a water source and it should be monsoon or spring season. 
what do you think what comes to your mind well one answer could be that frogs are amphibians let me write amphibians and amphibians can live both on land and in water well that can be an answer but if we are talking about croaking croaking is a sound made to mate right and the ultimate goal is to find a female frog and make her lay eggs and uh, and have as many baby frogs as they can that is the ultimate goal of croaking right now the eggs of frogs are not like the eggs of hens or ducks that we normally see they don't have a shell so these eggs has to be laid in and around shallow water to protect them from drying out and this is the picture of a uh, the eggs of frog this is how they look like in water and monsoon and spring is the time when our ponds lakes and wetlands have enough water in them so it makes perfect sense for a male frog to invite a female frog to a water source during these favorable seasons and on top of that do you know frogs never drinks water they absorb it through their skin So water is an inseparable part for the survival of frogs. Now this brings us to our next question. What happens to these frogs when the water dries up or freezes during summer or peak winter? Where do these frogs go? Well, frogs unlike us are poikilothermic. What does that mean now? Poikilotherms are those animals that do not have the ability to generate heat by themselves. So their internal temperature depends on the environmental condition. They are also called cold-blooded because uh, they need external factors like the sun or wind to keep their thermal balance, okay? On the other hand, you and me, we are mammals, so we are homeotherms. We are capable of generating heat to maintain the internal body thermal balance regardless of the environmental temperature. So during those days frogs go into a phase of least physical and physiological activity. Uh they slow down all their vital activities to save energy uh like uh, respiration and digestion to maintain life and to go about that harsh environmental condition. And uh, uh to survive that condition they either dig burrows uh, like these or they submerge themselves in the mud or they can find shelter under some dead decaying leaves and they would stay there without much movement until the situation becomes favorable until spring or next monsoon and this state of inactivation of the frogs during winter is called hibernation or winter sleep and during summer is called estivation or summer sleep now here i would recommend you to google about the alaskan wood frog it's a rare species of frog whose physiological activity do not slow down but stops completely when the environment is freezing outside their eyeball freezes their body fluid freezes they do not breathe they don't have a pulse rate their heart do not beat and in medical science they would be declared dead but miraculously enough as soon as spring hits alaska this frogs hops back to life as if it was never frozen and how this species manages to pull this off is still beyond the understanding of science amazing right nature never ceases to surprise us So as we just saw in many parts of the world these frogs get a very small duration in the whole year to be fully active right and they have to utilize this time very wisely apart from feeding themselves and getting ready for the next harsh season they also need to copulate mate and produce new frog babies so that their species can continue to survive right now to copulate The male frog croaks, the female frog reaches the male frog, and the male frog hops onto the back of the female frog. Now to hop onto the back of the female frog and to hold her firmly is not an easy task to do because the frog's skin is slippery, it has mucus on top, and it is not easy to hold on to such a slippery surface for long. But you know what? Nature again has helped the male gender with something called the copulatory pad which is present on the first digit of their forelimb with the help of which it gets a firm hold of the female frog. So till now we have found two special characters which are exclusively male characters in frog. So one can easily distinguish between a male and a female frog with the help of these characteristics. 
and this distinction in features between female and male frog is called sexual dimorphism. Now do you know which is the most common variety of frog in the Indian subcontinent? This is how it looks and it is called the Indian bullfrog and its scientific name is Rana tigrina. Now this scientific name has currently changed to Hoplobatricus tigrinus but you will find the old name which is Rana tigrina in most textbooks okay. So this is the Indian bullfrog and this is how it croaks. <laughs> Now let's talk a little bit about the morphology, okay? As you can see, they are stout and roughly triangular in shape. The dorsal skin is typically olive or green in color with dark patches, while the ventral region uh, down here is whitish or pale yellow in color. And the body is distinguished into a head and a trunk region, okay? You don't see a neck in between or a tail, okay? And the head has two small openings at the end of the snout, okay? These are called the external nares or uh, simply nostrils. It is just like the nostrils we have, okay? And as you can see, these frogs, they rest in the squatting position, okay? And they keep their hind limb folded like, uh, like the letter Z, right? This is how they fold uh, their hind limb. And uh, on disturbance, they suddenly jump by extending their hind limb to escape their enemies. The hind limb acts like a spring that throws the body into the air. So the major responsibility of locomotion is on the hind limb. That's the reason they are larger and more muscular than the forelimb. Now the forelimb has four digits. Forelimb has four digits in them. While the hind limb, it has five digits. And, and the digits on the feet, if we, if we say like these are the digits, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's say these are the digits of the frog and they are webbed when it comes to the hind limb, which is useful when they swim. Okay, in the water, the toes are spread apart and the broad webs, they push against the water, moving the body forward. Okay, that is how they swim. And apart from that, what you can see clearly are these two large eyes on each side of the head. Now, these big round protruded eyes have eyelids, just like you and me, okay? But along with that, they have another membrane, which is called the nictating membrane, which can be opened and closed uh, just the way we do with our eyelids, okay? This nictating membrane uh, helps to save the eyes from water and mud while these uh, frogs are swimming. And it also helps to keep these eyes moist when these frogs are on land. And it is not just the frogs that have these nictating nictating membranes. We see them in birds and reptiles as well. And behind the eyes and just below, you can see a circular membrane. This is nothing but the eardrum and it is, play, uh, and it is present on both sides. Okay. And this is called the tympanum. And they don't have the external pinna, the external ear that we have. They, they directly have the tympanum on the outside. And this tympanum is tuned to the croaking of the male frog of the same species. That is how they recognize the male frog, copulate and form many more frog babies. So this was a short video about the external features and the life of this hopping jumping friend, the frog. If you enjoyed learning about them, you will definitely enjoy learning about their reproductive and their awesome digestive system, which we will talk about in our future video.